Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're going to be taking a look at three of the command decks uh, from Star Realms that just came out. Now I've done a uh, informational video where I just showed you everything that comes in the deck and then um, that was about it. Today we're going to actually take a little bit more of an in-depth look at them. Not terribly in-depth, but still a little bit more in-depth and I'm going to give you my uh, thoughts on each of them. So let's go ahead and get down to the table, take a closer look at what comes in these, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. <laughs> So the three decks that we're going to take a look at today are the Unity, the Coalition, and the Alliance. Now, I've already showed you what comes in these packs, so I'm not going to focus so much on what you're going to get, although I'll show it to you. I'm also going to be talking about the strengths and weaknesses of these different um, decks and what I like and what I dislike about them. Now, the Unity Command deck comes with Biolord Walsh in it. Now, he's pretty nasty. He has 70 hit points. Uh, 70 authority, excuse me, uh, to uh, begin the game with. And of course, he's going to be drawing six cards normally. Of course, it's three in your starting hand, so forth and so on. But uh, he also has these two gambits that come along with him. This gambit, the Unity Warcraft, allows you to get plus one bases to all of your bases, and then your opponent's bases get negative one point. So that's really cool. One of his strengths is that he has stronger bases than you do. Uh, over here, he also has his once per game use, where if you scrap it, you get two uh, trade, and then you also have an ally ability for the blob and the uh, machine factions there. In addition to that, you can put the next base you acquire this turn directly into play. So that's another strength, that he can get a base into play pretty quickly, or you can kind of wait for that um, really uh, nasty base that you've been waiting for and get that into play automatically without having to cycle it through your deck. Now, he also has the Mech Worm, which is going to be a card that's going to be added to the trade deck before the trade row is built. So it's possible that your opponent will be able to purchase this before you do. You just kind of have to try to make sure that doesn't happen. But the Mech Worm says that you can scrap up to two cards from your hand and or discard pile and gain four combat for each scrapped card in this way. And then later on, if you can uh, ally with one of uh, this faction's uh, cards later on, you'll also be able to draw a card. But even without that ally ability, this is pretty nasty. That means you can have a combat of eight from this thing every single turn that you come up with. So that's really neat. A very strong, powerful uh, punch, a lot of authority, uh, good defense for those bases that come out there, and then the ability to get those bases directly into play, or at least a base directly into play with your one-time use here. And so as you can see, Biolord Walsh's starting deck is pretty nasty, combat intensive as well, especially with this uh, double ally ability here. This basic standard card has the ability to give you five combat to begin with. Uh, over here, you can have three if you're allying with one of those uh, different Blob Faction cards down here. And then, of course, Blob Faction is usually pretty combat intensive as well. But you do have a good smattering of trade in there. Two, uh, you can choose, of course, here with the Welder Drone, having two trade or two combat. Uh, the Ranger, which is a really neat standard ship. I, I like the fact that they can, uh, you can choose one trade or two combat with just your standard ship here. And then, of course, the Scout Bot has a really neat ally ability where you can choose a card of two or less in your discard pile and put it on top of your deck. So if you have one of those cards that uh, uh, really kind of helps you get your engine running a little bit better, uh, the Scout is really good at helping you do that. So uh, again, a pretty combat intensive starting deck, but a good smattering of ep uh, trade value in there as well. Now the Coalition Command Pack is going to come with uh, High Director Valken. Now she is a little weaker, especially compared to Biolord Walsh, where she only has 62 authority to begin with. Uh, but of course she will start as with everybody else. I'm not going to keep mentioning this. They all have the ability to go to six card hands instead of just five. Uh, then she has 
these two gambit abilities. Now, the coalition efficiency is really cool because it says once per turn, if you would scrap a card in your hand or discard pile, you may choose to gain five instead. Now, the, the, the point about this is that you don't have to discard or rather scrap your, from your hand or discard pile in order to gain that. You just have to have the ability to do it. And if you do have the ability, you can choose instead to heal five really useful uh, in a number of different ways. Here, uh, Valken's Enterprise says flip this gambit over and put it into play as a base. So of course, this is a one-time use and then when this is destroyed, it's gone. All right, so the Coalition Stronghold gives you two combat or uh, can heal two authority. And it says, if this base would leave play, you scrap it instead. It is an outpost six, so it is a pretty hefty base there. Uh, and it does give you the alliance ability for either uh, machine or uh, trade federation. So that's really cool as well. Very nasty base there, but you got to make sure it gets protected uh, if it gets put out there. The Mech Command ship is the uh, ship that will, the card that's going to go into the trade deck before the trade row is built, which gives your opponent the ability to purchase this possibly. Uh, it says that you may scrap up to two cards from your hand and or discard pile, and you gain three authority for each card scrapped in this way. So this is almost the antithesis of what Biro Lord Walsh's ship does, where uh, he gives you four combat per card scrapped. Uh, this person, uh, this mech command ship gives you uh, three authority per card uh, scrapped in this fashion. So uh, you can see kind of the difference in where you're going here. A very healing intensive uh, deck uh, and abilities for High Director Valken. High Director Valken's starting deck is uh, pretty trade intensive actually, although you do have this laser drone over here that has a possibility of doing five damage. Uh, but as you can see here, there's a lot of trade, some healing in here as well. Uh, so this is going to be one of those decks that uh, is probably not as combat intensive. Of course, it's a deck builder, so you can change that up as, as much as you want once you actually start playing the game. But starting off, you kind of see the direction that it's going in here. The next card you purchase uh, has a cost of, or the next Trade Federation uh, card that you purchase is, is diminished in cost by one. You have Healing here and uh, Trade, Trade, and then it says Shuffle the next base you acquire this turn into your deck instead of putting it into the draw uh, the discard pile and having it cycle through. Uh, here you can uh, you get one trade or you can scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. Uh, and then here, if you have scrapped a card from your hand or discard pile, you gain three combat. So again, uh, there is some slight subtleties to uh, getting some combat here, but you can see that it's a little bit more uh, economically inclined rather than anything else. So the Alliance pack is going to bring in Fleet Director Nandi. Now this is of course an alliance between uh, the Star Empire and the Trade Federation. And uh, pretty strong with 68 authority, that's not bad at all. And then of course these two effects here are really neat. And this is probably my favorite command deck out of the three that we've gone over today. Uh, for this one card specifically, it says once each turn, you may gain two trade or you can put the next ship or base you acquire on top of your deck. This came with great use and it's pretty powerful, uh, especially if you don't have to use that extra two because you can purchase something and know you're going to get it on the very next turn. Really cool. Uh, now, uh, the Nandi's Onslaught card is also pretty powerful because it gives you those two ally abilities that you may be needing that turn. But on top of that, you get to draw two more cards then you and your opponent each discard a card. So that is really cool, especially if you're really wanting to pack a punch or you're really uh, needing to buy that really expensive card in the trade row. This can really help you out a lot, especially if you know that, uh, or at least you maybe have a good idea that those two things are coming up. The Super Freighter is going to be the card that goes into the trade deck before the trade row is built, and it gives you four uh, uh, trade right off the bat, 
and you can draw two more cards. And then if you're able to uh, uh, ally with it, you also get to draw another card as well. But just realize that your opponent may be able to pot purchase that before you do. You just need to try to make sure that you can't, they can't, uh, if at all possible. Now, this person, however, only has five. And I said I wasn't going to say anything more about the card limit, but this is different than the rest of them. So uh, that is a pretty neat thing here. Fleet Director Nandi's starting deck is pretty uh, formidable, uh, especially with this ability here with the Diplomatic Shuttle to heal five authority uh, or get one trade, whichever you'd like. On top of that, the cargo boat is allowing you to heal two as well as getting two more trade. Um, then you have the ability of the Stellar Falcon with the uh, Tribute Transport if they're able to ally with each other. Target opponent discards a card and it gives you two combat. Over here, you get two trade or you can draw a card, then discard a card. And uh, being able to cycle through your deck is really kind of the one of the strengths of uh, Fleet Director Nandi's starting hand. Uh, here you have the Imperial Viper, which gives you one combat, but if you're able to ally with one of these uh, uh, Star Empire cards, then you can discard a card, and if you do, you draw a card. So again, that cycling through the deck is one of the strengths, I think, of this uh, uh, command deck, and uh, this is one of the ones that I had the most fun playing with. So that's it for the first three command decks. We're going to have another video later on uh, where we're going to go over the next three. But uh, the first one that we went over today was the Unity with Biolord Walsh. And this is a uh, alliance basically between the uh, Machine Cult and the Blob factions. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite combinations. Um, I, I don't always enjoy doing the whole scrap a card thing that the Machine Cult really kind of seems to focus on a lot, but I love the firepower that the Blob faction brings to the table. Uh, so with that having been said, this command deck, Biolord Walsh, does really fit that moniker. You are going to be scrapping a lot of cards, you are going to have a lot of firepower, and you also have a lot of authority as well. So you feel very strong going into the battle, but you still have to be pretty careful with how you play the deck um, because your, your authority and how much authority you start with, which I believe is the most out of all the command decks, that can really kind of get you off kilter in that you maybe feel a little bit too safe. And eh, don't do that because some of those other decks can really wallop, uh, pack a, a real punch. So uh, I, I enjoyed this one a lot and I like the, the two factions that are used in it, uh, but it's not my favorite. Still not my favorite of the three, but one that I did enjoy is the High Director Valken's command deck, the Coalition, uh, uh, alliance between the uh, Trade Federation and the Machine Cult. And again, Machine Cult is probably the one that drew me down a, lot, a little bit on this one because I really do enjoy the Trade Federation and how economical and how, how much they're able to heal. I love of decks that can where you can restore your authority and that's what the trade federation seems to have a, a, a leg up in uh, so i i did enjoy this and, and i and i think it's a great command deck but it's not my favorite now my favorite out of this trio of command decks was the alliance command deck with fleet director nandi i loved playing this i love her gambit where uh you can get either two uh trade or if you don't use that two trade you can take the card you just purchased and put it on top of your deck i love that ability because i hate buying a new card and then having to have it cycle through my di discard pile first before it even has a chance to get into my hand so i love that ability it's one of my favorite things that uh, you can do in the game. Uh, but on top of that, because uh, her deck is very uh, trade intensive, you're going to have a lot of cash to be throwing around purchasing those new uh, cards from the trade row. And on top of that, uh, there's some really uh, neat combinations that can be pulled between the Star Empire and the Trade Federation. Uh, so this is... Uh, probably not one of the most powerful decks at first blush, but after you've been walloped by it, I think you'll be a believer.
So all in all, I think that uh, these command decks, especially these three, really kind of showcase uh, the differences that you're going to have between these different uh, command decks and how different it makes the game feel. You're still doing the same thing as far as Star Realms is concerned. You're still purchasing cards from the trade row, trying to hit your opponent and uh, you know destroy their bases and all this other kind of stuff. You're still doing all of that, but it provides another skin, another layer of uh differentiality between you and your opponent it's not just two um you know generic dudes uh duking it out in the middle of space no i am fleet director nandi and you are bio lord walsh and we are going head to head and it really does add another layer of thematic involvement into the game which is what frankly the game was lacking to begin with so i like that they're coming out with these new command decks i said it before uh, when hero realms came out with their character decks that i wish they had done that with star realms and now they have and boy has it made a difference it really makes the game that much better so these three command decks, I'm not going to give each one a specific uh, number. They're just all nines out of ten for me because they do add that much to the game and they add that much more uh, to how involved I am in each different game. So that's it for me. Nine out of ten for the command decks. I guess that's a little bit of foreshadowing because I'm going to do three more decks in the next video. And guess what? They're all going to be nines out of tens as well. So there you go. Spoilers a little bit, but you'll get over it. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Nine out of ten for the command decks for Star Realms. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.